Greetings. Welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you, the new and renewed father, cope with the anxiety and stress of fatherhood so that you can be the dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of Abimelech Foundation, an artist and a father of nine. My mission is to help you reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. Today's episode is an interview that I participated with Brother Joe. Uh, Joe has a podcast. I think you'll find it very interesting. uh, Is Unrevealing Religion Podcast. This conversation touched home. We touched a lot about my beginnings, uh, the purpose of why I do the things I do, pertaining to fatherhood, my trials and tribulations. Overall, I, I think this interview was important to share. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. It's just, I think it's the benefits of um, revealing this interview were enlighten some spiritual conquests, some balance in your life, some parenting aspects, and um, better perspective of who we are as men, as fathers. My mistakes might have been a teachable moment or it could have been in, you know, couldn't have been me, you know. Welcome to another installment of Unraveling Religion. I'm your host, Joel Lessies, and I'm here with my good friend, Ra. Ra, I'm wondering if you could let the audience know a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yes. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Ra. I'm the host of Father Torch Podcast. I'm also the founder of Abimelech.org, also a foundation. I am a father of nine. I guess a lot of that's a lot of kids. <laughs> a father of nine, and uh, I am I am very passionate about um, fatherhood and I, I, all the aspects that goes with fatherhood, and that includes the mental and spiritual as well as physical. Requires balance, requires balance in all realms. I'm I'm proud to be here. It just seems like the work that you're doing with Father Torch is, seems like it's really, it's not something that I've heard quite in this way. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Father Torch, Father Torch was developed in 2013 and um, it was developed out of this frustration of being a father. No, no space to, uh, no space to express. then, Then when you have a space, it cannot express certain emotions or certain attributes that, you know, the world. You live through the world. I, I I was pretty angry. I was an angry man, pretty angry man. I had so much things that I have not dealt with, so much trauma that I didn't cope with too well. At that time, I was at that epiphany point that, you know, I needed to change or or be destroyed, you know. And um, I chose life and I chose I chose not to give in to those urges of giving up. And believe me, they were strong. I, I, you know, they were strong. And I, 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 I fought a torch these with both angles of fatherhood. Uh, it is with the misguided as well as the the wise experience, and it's okay. giving it is giving it the sense of light or a beacon to fatherhood to show that you're not alone. You know, I too have gone through this, or we have experienced this, and this is how we can overcome. Make it realistic. We need to be real with each other. You need to have that sense of vulnerability, of trust. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. We don't have that sense of trust anymore because it's been so burned out, so over exhausted. Uh, to be a deviant is not necessarily a bad thing because it means it's out of the box. You're just out of the box. You're not in conform. But to be deviant in a wicked mindset or, you know, just just that, that deceitfulness, yes, it, it's destructive, it's, it's painful. And and it leaves a long, deep scar, you know. It, it takes time to heal. You know, you talked about uh, sort of like your, your epiphany moment. What was that awakening experience like for you? Uh, believe it or not, it, it was a first of many. The truth of it is, when you go through an epiphany, you have to face. It, it's truth you're facing of so. self. Um, if you're not willing to face that truth, you, you, you will run. You know I mean, <laughs> and sometimes some of us are glutton for pain, punishment, or pain. We, we we tend to face it, but not know the lesson of it. So we, we repeat the same thing. We can see the lesson, know the lesson, but we don't incorporate the lesson, and that's it's going to come again. It's an everlasting. Uh, repeating of pain and torture and torment, if you will. You know, some of the epiphanies that I had had I had to deal with a lot of self-doubt and, and depression and, and as well as some form of anxiety. You, you can't hold on a relationship, you know, jobs is not where, where you want to be, but you're working, you know, you just you were you were existing, but it's not a 
happy existence. The, the blame of your father not there or being there becomes so faded. Your anger has no direction. So it just, just consume everything. So the things you used to do, you don't do anymore. The things you used to like, you just have a dislike for it now because it reminds you of what you used to do. I went to self-trialization of self and just finding myself and recognizing who I am and what I stand for. And I I had to I had to be reminded that my father didn't make these choices for me. Although he had his own demons and, and, and his trauma, uh, although I experienced or witnessed a lot of them, I had to let them go because it was killing me. I had to let it go because I'm 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 feeding my own children these things, or I'm I'm poisoning my friends around me, right? I, I'm I'm I, I I wear it well, right? Because you know it's not like you can recognize it unless I reveal it. So I was wearing it like a real coat, you know, this <laughs> coat mm-hmm. of armor, but it was killing me. Yeah, yeah, I was strong. I was powerful. I was resilient. I wasn't mm-hmm. happy, you know. But, you know, everybody has a point of a period in their life when they go through up and downs. But when my downs was down, I was down. And mm-hmm. when I was when I was high, I couldn't get to where I want to. So I, I just trickle right back down. I trickle mm-hmm. right back down because, again, I'm still trying to climb up with all this baggage, right? All this weight. You know, what, what protect me as a child and can't protect me as a man. I used to say things, you know, like we have to know what to destroy and what to rebuild. And a lot of times we don't want to destroy things. So we, we com- become hoarders, right? We, we hoard feelings and things that remind us of other things and not understanding that it stops us from yeah. growing. I had to get out of that anger and out of that frustration state of mind, you know, that the whole misconception of what it is to be a father, you know, because I had to, I had the formula. However, I didn't have I didn't have the understanding of the formula which I had. I had the tools, but didn't have no training on how to use it. You are you are left with just a tool, right? You just have yeah. it. So you don't have no work. You don't you don't see the work. Why couldn't I have a father? You know, or you know, why couldn't I have a life? I wanted that thing too. So you become bitter, you know, you become very sour and bitter about things, you know. So when you see good things, I will spoil it, you know, or or, or I won't see the true value, right? And then Everyone around you, especially people who mean no good to you, will always try to convince you to hold on to something that makes you feel less than because now they are up here above you. You know, they right. you know, they they can they themselves get a joy or benefit of you being in a constant state of confusion. You talked about the formula and the skill set. Can you talk a little bit about what that formula was and how you put it into place and what you want to offer to people about it? The formula I speak of, our, our fatherhood deals with manhood as well as childhood. We 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 under, we know the titles, right? Spiritual, physical, mental, but we often forget emotional. These things coexist in a balance. Um, when they shift, we see the we see the result of it. You know, a, a hurricane or a volcano or action or or tornado, we become unstable. Right? We become unstable because we lean more on one side of things than the other, or become confused with our own strengths and power are so delicate but powerful at the same time. When you're dealing with when you're dealing with someone spiritual, mental, and physical, and as well as emotional, believe it or not, emotional can cloud all of it at once. Mm-hmm. Weakening the spirit can again darken you, right? It's darkening your 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 the set of mindset, keeping your mind confused will lessen your physical self to be feel worthy of things. You know, uh there's many fathers that's out here that don't understand the the, the importance of even emotional intelligence as well as spiritual strength and, and guidance as well as the physical endurance that you have to uphold your temple, feed and heal your temple. And as well as your mental, this is the key to the spiritual and your physical is the realm contains the emotional because you can manifest things to, you know, reality. And all of that is a is a tool or is a is a is a, is a formula that you have to use because it also uh creates for you the ability to have insight, to have yeah. the to to absorb the wisdom in in great quantities, right? To learn to learn of the to learn from the experience, which help gains and strengthens your knowledge, so that you can do better. So when you start having children, you automatically know what you need to invest in them, and you automatically know that you have to put them above your crown because. You know where you stand. So the point is to uplift them. So you yeah. use you use your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom to instill in them. And so they can do better or leave off where you stop. What I hear you saying, Ra, part of our journey is to discover our power, our inner power as an individual, as a sovereign human being, 
our power to do good and to influence in positive ways the people around us. L lighting a light, you know, it, it's clouded from us, our own light. And for us to find our light, ignite it, and then share it with others seems to be the, the whole purpose of this. Yeah, I, the beacon of fatherhood is what I represent. And um, to remind fathers of their role and their power and remind them of who they are is my my whole entree. That, that's why I use the, the 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 memo when I do Father Torch um, podcast, you know, be the dad you wish you had, right? Yeah, by the way, I love it's, that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And um and to and to um focus your energy of healing, right? Healing and learning from your lesson, right? Learning from your path, right? Not to share that path in a way that's gonna hinder your loved ones, you know. Uh but this world, this world and the system of things makes it harder. Makes it hard for you to be that guy, right? To be that guy because you have so many different types of personalities. Mm -hmm. Some are strong, some is weak, some is more influential, some is just outright rage, you know, rage grateful. But you have to finesse yourself and maneuver, navigate through these things to find yourself, your self worth, your love, your understanding of self. Right? Um, oftentimes, we we get caught up one of the realm and we make it all about our lives, and then. When that fails, all betrays us. All, all, all it takes is one. So it betrays us. All hell breaks loose. We we no longer have any direction. We lost. You know, everybody's everybody's hating, or they just don't understand me. And now you're confused. But you won't admit that you're confused because we have that masculinity about us, right? We we have to we have to stifle our emotions, right? And stifle our 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 weaknesses. You know, we have to walk with that broken foot for miles in miles on end just to show that we're worthy of expressing one shed of tear, right? You know, that something hurts. That plays that plays a heavy part in our health. You know, uh, uh, there's just so many things that plays in our health as men, as fathers, that we we have to be very mindful of. I mean, something as something, something as violence is a part of health. What you absorb, you take in what around you, you know, you you yeah. tense, you know, uh, uh, you know, what we're seeing right what we see nowadays and the intensity that we see. The degree and things what we see nowadays is a result of the things we experience and the yeah. result of the things that we neglect and the things that we suppress. When was the last time you saw a grown man look at each other and say, That's, you know, I like what you're doing. Yeah. Don't know each other. Just walk up and say, you know, I like what you're doing with your child. Or, hey, listen, hey, have you tried this with your child? You know, share information, share that fatherhood right. connection, right? You don't see that anymore. You walk down the street, you put your head down, you don't look, you don't make eye contact. You 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 know um, you tend to stay in your zone right in your personal bubble and th that concept of divide and uh, and and they keep you alone is such a powerful tool. It it, it don't require much. It just, all they just introduce a bit of, a bit of doubt in the, in your in your mind of who you are, and it just trickle effect goes down right down. Yeah. It's a trickle effect because you nurse that doubt. Yeah. Although, although you in life, you must always leave room for doubt so you will never be surprised or taken off guard. However, when you introduce doubt, it's important to question yourself too. That doubt allows us to question ourselves. There you go. And 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 you you are more cautious, right? You're more aware of your wisdom and, and understanding of your personal limitations and 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 then understand how can I overcome that. But yeah. if you if you if you have no doubt, have no fear. These things don't come up. Yeah, it, it won't even manifest in your mind that you need to look and resort to these things. And when is the last time? I mean, truthfully, when is the last time we as men had a time to sit down and say, "Let me collect my thoughts." We are constantly, you know, we are constantly on the move. Constantly gotta be on the grind. We gotta get that cash. We gotta get that money. We gotta provide. We gotta do all these things that is said to be a man or a father. And then they come to find out it's a lie. That is. I mean, <laughs> that is a world tour. You know, just turn yeah. your whole world around. Pressure, pressure. Yeah, you, you still go into peer pressure, self-esteem issues, anxiety, depression. You go into all these things and everybody's telling you, oh, be a man about it. That's what society tells us, right? Mm -hmm. you, don't, you, you don't feel a pain. It's a construct. Don't worry about it. Don't you know, just yeah. move on, right? You, yeah. don't, you know, pain, pain is only in your mind. It's only in your head. Don't worry about it. You know, it, it, will, go, it will get by. 
Meanwhile, so, you're traumatized by it. Totally. I'm wondering, because I, I know for myself, like, I, I like uh, poetry. I like writing, creative writing. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about health and the importance of taking time to do your art in relation to fatherhood, in relation to being a man? That's a, that's a good question. That's a good statement, too, right? at the same time. <laughs> the importance of this, as an artist, as a man, as a father, the important to take time for art, not only that is creative, it's a creative spirit, but it also opens a realm of calm and serenity, as well as therapy. It gives you a sense of relief, if you will. When I sit down and, and do my artwork or I'm drawing, believe it or not, I am thinking about my fathering, my manhood, my relationship, my people around me, my circle. I'm thinking about my world itself. And I yeah. am putting it on paper as I see it in my mind, in my universe. I am putting it down. And believe it or not, it also helps me oversee all the things I've done, all the things that I want to do. And I'm yeah. literally, I'm literally drawing out drawing a picture, you know, illustration, I mean, uh, of a blueprint of what it is I want to do, how I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm doing it in the way where the, the, the spiritual, uh, the spiritual, uh, correct, the correct spirit is with me and strong, you know, because you don't call it, it, it comes to you, but it, you don't control it. It just, you just flow with it, you know? And also it, believe it or not, it, it reveals a lot of things too. It reveals your inner self, it allows you to see yourself in the Roy's form, in the Roy's form, without threat, without compromise, there's no filter. It's, it's, it is your raw self. You, as artists, as artists, we are already emotional. We, we are emotional. That, that is, that is why we, we, we are so in tune with the creative spirit. We are emotional. And it's not to say like boo hoo. We, when I say emotion, that means, it means we are so fine in tune with our inner selves, our emotion. That our yeah. expression, our absorbing, our awareness, it is great because yeah. we are in tune with that. However, living in the world that we live in, we have to put on an extra coat of layer to protect that emotion, to protect that self. Because to the world, we are feast. Okay, we we are a buffet, right? Because they would just hit you with their sense of reality, their sense of constructing, their sense of systematic uh, uh, oppression, and as an artist, it could be a fuel, but a downer at the same time. A fuel and a downer. Because you have to absorb this in order to create it. Yeah. And if you don't have an outlet, which is healthy for you to do, you become consumed with the very same thing that fuels you. And as a father, it relates to fatherhood, is that it relates to fatherhood because when you're in tune with you and you know how it feels to you, whether it be painful or joy, you know how to express it in the most beautiful form of love and expression and realism that it takes people years to figure out what you actually put there you know whether it be writing whether it be drawing whether it be taking a picture they won't get what you get because when you was doing this you was in your prime emotional self you was in your being you was in your spiritual your physical your mental and as well as your emotional self and Words cannot describe that at times, and sometimes the words that express can give such a different definition to what is actually there. It takes people years to decipher that code of what you meant, or what it is you meant to say. You know, years, and I'm, I'm not talking about you know one or two years. I'm talking about years to say that why you did what you did, yeah. how come you did this, what did you see? Yeah, we're not psychic. Don't get me wrong, we're not psychic. However, we see the cause and effect so clearly yeah so clearly it's, it's actually scary and it's like <laughs> you you get extremely nervous of what you just saw sometimes yeah. it, it shocks you so much that you would stop drawing painting or whatever you're doing i had to take time to woo side out like okay what i just what i just you know what i just saw what i just felt i i gotta understand it before i can go any further you know that kind of a thing yeah yeah and it relates to fatherhood is that you know, when you're dealing with your children or you're dealing with your significant other, you have to have self-discipline, self-control, and self-overstanding of you before you can deal with them. And that's how I that's how I relate it. That's how I put the the all all it together because 
your 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 emotions, your physical, again, your spiritual and mental, all of it is all a learning process and all of it is is, is a powerful tool, but you got to know how to use it. That makes a lot of clear sense to me, Ra. I'm wondering I'm wondering if you could you could talk a little bit about your vision your vision of the future about what you want, what do you want for people? What do you want for, for fathers? What is the the ideal thing that you want to offer for, for people in your vision of what you're doing? Well, first I would say, I want fathers to have a voice, have that less of a disregard, a movement, if you will, of fathers actually sharing the same rights and respect of being a parent, like a mother in our world. Mothers is the creation, the, the life giver, right? The life giver of all of all of us. And in that power and that, that ability does not disregard us, but the system has created that divide or that gap to say that we are second best at, at that, right? Because we can't bring forth life. We can plant the seed of life, but we can't bring forth life. I want us, I want us to understand. I want us to understand the, the the importance of our presence and the importance of our nurturing abilities. I, I, we are here together and we should be together that we can build a stronger path and future that that will that will go beyond the eyes of our legacy and what we see. You know, how we see how we see legacy. Right now, legacy now is this is there's no there's no empathy, compassion, there's no, there's no thought of future in a sense of simplicity as far as you being you you know loving you who you are and i just want i want i want father torch to be the beacon of fatherhood not just in the dark but a beacon of understanding of fatherhood strength power and authority the monarch in fatherhood being the head does not mean the crushing ruler with the iron fist and wooden foot it means that without his counsel without Without, without the neck that holds the head, without the body that supports the, body, the, the head and, sh- and shoulder, nothing will be, it will, it will move. But it, once it moves in existence as one, everything has its place. Everybody moves, everything moves. Fingers move, hand moves at a sheer thought or emotion. Look at it, look at it this way. We breathe vol- involuntarily, right? We don't, we don't control the breathing. Imagine when we have to think about breathing. I mean, we probably would die you know, because, I mean, it won't it won't be consistent right because we might get another thought something to distract us something does anything but the mind still as much as and, and as powerful as it is can't do anything unless you think of something unless you command it right as powerful as it is but it doesn't never and it, it never once says to any of the organs in your body you know what i don't need you because you know i'm there i'm your brain you know I, I run everything right without me you wouldn't exist no it actually tries its best to always keep things in sync and balance. You must breathe, move, active, stretch. I mean, it warns these things, but it never forces it. It never tells you. It never says, I'm the head, do what I say because I said to do it. No, if anything, it always makes a suggestion. Hey, you just hit that foot. Is that a pain? That's a pain. I think that's a pain. And that's, you know, then it, it would send out the signals. Like, hey, I think that's a pain, right? I think there's something going on there. It gives these kind of warnings, but it never says, I'm the brain. So, uh, you know, do what I say. We as fathers, we are all kings and rulers. Even they have an old saying, a dog is a lion in his house. Yeah. He's not a lion, but he, he's a ruler of his house. And yeah. as a ruler, you must have active listening skills. You must have compassion. You must have the, the ability to learn from your mistakes. And you must be willing to learn new things that you can be better tomorrow about old things so i want to create such a movement that fathers can be themselves whether 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 they are black white yellow green or purple they can be themselves and it's okay they can be themselves and mighty and be okay they don't have to be nothing else they don't have to be the toughest of the toughest they don't have to be the most macho they don't have to be the most religious they can be themselves and and have that respect and honor most importantly, have that honor. No more, no more confusion of what you think you are and who you are. Just to have that ability to say, I am a man, I am a father. And I'm proud of that, right? Like that's an honor. It's like that's like an extra crown on your crown saying, I am a father. Mm-hmm. I want men to, to remember, I am a father. 
the highest honor a man can receive on this earth. That's one investment in your life does not require or you can't retire from. That is an investment that keeps on giving as long as you invest in. Because even, even when you're dead, you are still father. You are still the father. You have just as much rights and equal, equal, um, equal care and responsibility to the, the child that which you and the life giver, which would be the mother, have. Not every man is a nurturer, but he's capable of being the great nurturer. Not every mother is a is a a, a strong advocate, but yet they can be because they are they are sharp with their tongue and they, they are embraceive and they and they in tune with their emotions. So they know how to jolt you, you know, get you get you going. A father has great authority in his presence and his stature. Have us embrace our health, our embrace ourselves as who we are and what we are. Have that that togetherness, that connection, that we can we can disagree and, and we can disagree. We can disagree and still be in love. I, my, my plan is not for you to, everybody sing Kumbaya and we all live as one because we are not different. We are different, mm -hmm. but, it, it, but it doesn't make us different. We are different, yes, but it doesn't make us different. We bleed, we breathe, we live to learn. And through that, we get to learn one another and we get to teach one another. Uh, or I should say, have more humility in ourselves that we can not be too ashamed to admit our mistakes, to learn from our mistakes, and also to embrace that mistake. That means I would, I would, I would die for what I believe and what I am and who I am, especially to my children. Yeah. But that's not what I'm practicing. That's not what I'm teaching. But I'm showing you that I am a warrior because a warrior protects, protects the one he loves, willing to live his life, to, to put his life to say, I will sacrifice this so you can be here or there. But it's not a, I'm going to quit my job and just focus on you. Um, you know, don't worry about the bills. We're going to just going to do this here. You got to be wise about it. You got to be smart of it. If we can make time for ignorance, we can make time to better things. Rob, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we could talk a little bit about father torch and your podcast your presence your message is that it is all heart it is squaring to what is truthful your experience and articulating that honestly in a, in a wisdom-filled kind of way and i'm just wondering part of that must have been informed by your mental health journey my mental health status when i came to came to this truth was not in jeopardy of um you know of me like jumping the bridge right it, it, no, although, no. although those thoughts have come, right? Those thoughts have come and they come full force. You know, they come hardcore. <laughs> uh, you know, it, they, they come hardcore. And, and, and I, I want I want to I want to be vulnerable here uh, and, 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 and share a bit here. There's many times I have stepped in the, in the realms of the dark, wonder who's speaking to me. And, and I had to I had to truly, really um, understand who's speaking to me in the dark between the let's let's just say devil devil and god right there's we're going to use that terminology devil and god right because we all have a little devil in us and we all have god in us in the dark and while you're in the dark you speak ill you speak in rage you speak of so much emotional distress and turmoil and torment what the what the the devil in you will say things you deserve you know i feel what you feel you know what you should do you should go out there and and, and represent you should make the people know how you feel. They deserve to hear you. And 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 what you're feeling, man. Listen, I I feel it too. You know, you, you should. You yeah. know what? I've been there. And and that that charge it gives you that rage. You know, you get that power. And and, and if you're not careful, you act upon it without realizing it. When you're in the dark and you're speaking to the Creator or the Most High or the Universe, if you will, or ancestors, really, your ancestors would never nurse your anger. However, they would never leave you alone either. Yep. They was they would use words in the sense of in a, in, a, in a consciousness as well to say things like yeah you just you know you deserve to do this and you should do that I and mean, you should go about doing it this way because I felt your pain too. Instead, it would say I feel your pain. I've been there. Let us work it out. Let us help you. Let us see what we can do about the situation. I won't leave you alone. I am here for you. And they will also even go as far as share with you their tribulations, their history, or, or their, you know, their emotional well-being. And that's only if you're listening. That's only if you are in tune 
but the but the, the truth of the matter is through that journey of my mental health i had to forgive i had to forgive me first forgive myself for carrying such hatred and burden i had to forgive myself for carrying such thoughts and such hatred that it stopped me from so many things i had to admit to myself that i am not a bad man i am not wicked and then you 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 get to see everything around you present past and and future i had to forgive before I can forgive my father, before I can go on and forgive my mother, before I can forgive anyone that that I that remember that I heard as well. Now I have to forgive myself. I am worthy of your forgiveness. And I am worthy of I am worthy of being forgiven and being loved. Right. I, I'm worthy of that. When I when when I learned to do such things, I was able to find love. I was able to find love within me and to find, you know, the love of my life. I was able to do that because now I wasn't looking through a dirty lens. You know, I, I was, it was clear. Mm-hmm. I know what I wanted. I know what, how I wanted. I know, how, I know the purpose, my purpose, right? I should say, to be clear, quite clear, I had more of a definition of my purpose. I was always aware of my purpose. I had more of a definition. I have more gratitude, right? When you forgive, when you let go, you have more sense of gratitude, accomplishment, achievement, if you will. You glow. You speak differently. You feel differently. You tend to even 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 change your whole personality about who and how people see you. For people before you, your ancestors, you ever give thanks for even to your parents and how to how to properly honor them, not because of what they've done and what they didn't do and how they didn't do this and how they how come there wasn't this. You properly honor them by getting yourself in order. And I say in order, that means your life in order and simplify the fact that you are loved and you are worthy of such things. It is not a something that you do once in a while again. Like I said, you you have to do this every day. Just the way you speak, the way you carry yourself for how I express myself to you. Forgive me how you see me. But most of all, forgive me enough to know that I am deserving. I am worthy of yeah. your love. I am worthy of your forgiveness. Releasing that physical anguish and anxiety and depression, right? And getting hold of my trauma and learning from it that I can move on. So as a father, it's important for us to check our mental health, to check our spiritual health, our emotional health, as well as our, our physical health. And check, you know, check us, you know, put us in our place. Again, sense of balance. It's important as a father that we must be vulnerable with the right people because you know who to be vulnerable with. You do. You can feel. Yeah, you can. And especially if you tune with yourself, you get a sense of vibe with someone, right? You you meet somebody and, you know, your spirit don't take with them. There's a reason that's happening. We're not on the same level. The frequency is off, right? It's off. At that time, cocky, you know, arrogant, right? (laughs) Prideful, right? I can do it, you know? I'm going to conquer this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that was that was uh put it this way, it's, it's a learning experience. But what turned me from that or turned me around from that is that I had a I had a real, real friend, beautiful woman, but she tried her best to change me, right? She had in her mind that she was gonna change me from leading my life in the, of the flesh. And she was heavy in the church, you know, heavy into it. Although I gave a warning, like, you know, I am not an easy person to change. It just didn't, it just don't mix with me. That I got a taste of what it felt to have someone else hurt by me. I couldn't. I I couldn't say. I was. I was trying to protect myself. I had no excuses. Right? No excuses. And nobody gonna tell me what to do. Or I'm gonna be who I am. How can I say that? And I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm still learning. Right? And I actually felt it. Oh. I, I felt that crush. I mean, wow. I'm when I say crush. I mean, I I myself was hurting because she was hurting. I I was that connected. You know, I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. And I I I. I it, it made me question, is that how my father felt when he hurt me? Yes. Right? Yes. I, I started thinking about it. Is that what he felt when he betrayed my trust and love? But never right. considering, never considering that you hurt other people. Right. Never considering that did this, you know, that someone in your life may be genuinely here for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that was, I think that was the last time I saw her. And then in um it was too bad because the thing is. I would love to, I would love to make my amends with that, you know, mm-hmm. even, even to say, Hey, you know, you know, that I'm sorry, you know, I, I didn't know no better. And it, and even that is not an excuse, but and admit to her that she has made some change. 
in me because again, I didn't feel until I heard her. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't feel no remorse of anything else. My thing was like, you know, the game or, you know, you know how it is out here. And, you know, I don't love nobody. Right. I, that, that was, that, that's what I taught myself. No one loves me and I'm, I don't love them, but it's good to have fun. Right. You know, have, have fun, you know, now, understanding that when you connect with someone is more than sexual, uh, sexual connection, you are connected to them. That's that is true. why that is why it's so powerful when you start to hate this person, you know, yeah. or feel betrayed because you are connected to yeah. this person. And the minute you turn off that connection or that emotion, you become bitter and hard, yeah, cold, almost cold even. You know, like you just like a stiff board. You know what I mean? And I had to, you know, I had to really, you know, I had to really look into myself. So again, this was another epiphany. But as I say, it was more epiphanies that was happening in my life, more changes, more growth. And each time these two things thing took place, sometimes it was painful, sometimes it was durable. Yeah. But the thing is, the most important thing out of all that I was dealing with is that I had to learn. I had to learn. And if I didn't learn, I was doomed to keep repeating it. It got to the point that after I hurt her, I kept getting hurt. Yeah. I kept getting, I, I, I got into something else. Sounds like she opened your heart. Yes. Yes, because it was so hardened. Oh my God. It was so it was so hardened, man. I mean cold blooded, you know, just but she did make that change and she did help me to open up to the point that I can receive love. Yes. However, the lesson I didn't learn is how to love or how to be realistic with it, right? Because I thought, okay, if I tell you how I feel, then you should tell me how you feel. And then we we would, you know, there's right. no plan. There, there was no plan, right? You know, we we're gonna make this happen. But where's the plan? You know, where's the where's the 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 room for the doubt? Like we talked earlier, you know, where's the room for the doubt when when things go low? You know, how are we gonna how are we gonna handle it? Where's the communication? Right? Where's the dynamic? I was out here trying to look the part, but there, there was no part for me to be into because again, I didn't plan nothing. Everything was right to the nose, you know, right straight to the nose. So it wasn't it wasn't planned. There's no plan. We enjoying ourselves. It's fun, right? You know, everything should be. A celebration right everything should be a celebration but what about the days it is not a celebration i ran from those things i avoided that you know i don't want to deal with that yeah. if, if you if you down because you know you, you can't afford to live the life you live or do the things you do or get a higher education i didn't want that i don't want to talk about that let's go drink let's have a smoke you know just, yeah. let's you know just have fun yeah yeah that living a life without a plan again Having a purpose and living a purpose, two different things. I didn't have a plan. You know what I mean? My my version of a plan of being a father is like, well, I'm here, right? That, you know, I'm here. But what are you going to do with that time? What are you going to teach? You know, how are you going to teach? Yes. Now, now, in all means, don't get me wrong. It didn't get in the way of me loving my children, you know, wanting to provide and do things, but I was still kind of cold and hurt at the same time. You know, I, I had to learn things the hard way all because i could not take the time for myself to heal or to overcome you yeah. know just back after back after back you know everything was just you know happening yeah. some of my own demise and others you know it just consequences past right things of the past and me not closing those doors right not closing those chapters i just kept adding adding to them and i thought if i left this door open i'll go to this door i would be okay because i could always come back to it now, understanding that things come out, right? You you, you leave things open, things enter. And, hope, and and a lot of times we don't prepare for those things. We don't prepare because we didn't put it down. We didn't close that door. Right. We didn't learn that lesson. So when it, it comes back and it manifests into something different, you start yeah. getting flashbacks or triggered by things that you don't even understand that you're getting triggered because the, the, you have that resolve, that issue. You yeah. know, I, I'm dealing with a woman and she reminded me of the last woman. You know what I mean? I'm not dealing with the one current. I'm still, I'm still on the past. I mean, although most, you know, most men will say, well, that's a woman thing. It's not. If you don't deal with your past, you can't have a future. That's right? true. So it's not about living in the past, but dealing with the past, dealing with the things you were dealing with, learn from them. Because once you can learn from it and forgive it, that's it. There's, there's nothing else lingering. You know, there's no, there's nothing haunting you down there. You are away from that. I want to know your final thoughts. Um, two things. One, I want to know about your relationship to surrender. What, mm. what, what, and how have you surrendered? And it doesn't matter to what that we surrender to, but mm -hmm. 
surrender from our own self, our own small self is important. Mm -hmm. And then I just was wondering if you could give final thoughts about final wisdoms that you wanted to share. To the, the, the truth of surrender is, um, is a form of submission. Form of submission, right? And, and what I experienced about surrender is, in other words, face the truth. <laughs> go through the fire. You have to go through that pain. It's not so much you reliving the pain, but you have to go through it so you can have so, so you can have resolve. Oftentimes we chase the pain. We chase what it ill us. You know, we get into a relationship or we find a job or we find something similar that imitates what caused that pain for us because it's familiar. It's and we become transparent in it. We become so embedded to we want to find out, find out. Because we think if we go around it, somehow, if we beat, if we go ahead of it, then we would beat the pain that we had before, and then we would prevent ourselves from being ever hurt again. And that's a lie. The, yeah. the, fact, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that I had to I had to feel the pain for me to get over the pain. Yeah. That's the lesson I had to learn the hard way, because I refused to admit anything, and I refused to submit. I kept going through being tormented and, and, and causing destruction no matter where I did and how positive my intent was i destroyed everything i had to i had to learn to submit or surrender my pride i had to surrender my pride and surrender my my power i had to i had to power down and in order for me to feel that pain i had to power down and go through that flame what did you gain what did you find when you surrendered or su submitted mm -hmm. yeah what did you find utter truth i found the naked truth of me and I found, and I also found that I am not the only one. Yeah. And I found, and I found it a, um, a sense of serenity. Truth of myself released me from so much, so much that I held on to. It, it, it held me at that truth, that truth point. Believe it or not, when you when you surrender, when I said when you surrender, you put up a fight at first. You, you know, you you fight it. You know, you, you, you I mean, you put up a hell of a fight. When you start to think about it, think about that you're not doing any good in it. You start to just let go, and when you let go, you embrace it. It's not about being vulnerable, or you know, just simply being vulnerable. I should say, but it's about embracing the mistakes, embracing the achievement, embracing the things you want to be and want to do, and the achievement together allowed me to surrender because there was there, there, there was there was no greater um, purpose of being who I am now. Then for me to surrender the things that held me at gunpoint all day long. Uh, I mean, I, what I hear you saying is that there was something much greater waiting for you. You see, but see that that comes with time, right? And that comes with experience, right? And that knowledge and that wisdom, which again, which is what you learn. You learn that okay, this is what I need to do. This would be quite difficult for some young men to understand without guidance. Doing this without guidance is very, very. It could be very painful. Yeah. Because it's not something you can rush through. It's not something that it takes a couple of moments, maybe a, you know, an hour or two. This is like lifetime kind of thing. You know, this is something you you got to do this every day, every day. Like I said, gratitude and all that. You know, all of what I mentioned before. But to surrender, you have to do this every day. You have to surrender the thought that you are not the only one. You have to surrender the thought that 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 although you are powerful, someone else is much powerful than you. Although you were wise, someone else is wiser than you, mm -hmm. right? But it's not in a way that you must challenge it or you have to go to a first battle with it. It just simply means that you have a lot to learn. And you have a lot to learn to the things that you've gone through. Even what you already know, you have to relearn so you can do more. You know how to walk, but now I got to know how to run and walk. I had to know how to take my time and move fast. So I know I had to take my time and move fast because I had to stay current that I'm not left in the past and understand my future ahead of me because my present dictates my future. That the part of surrender. And as far as uh, leaving uh, a word of uh, advice or wisdom, I would say to my fathers, be yourself always. A worry heart creates such stress in your mind that it destroys the illusion of any kind, of, any kind of honor or love for yourself. You as a man, although entitled to feel love, entitled to be loved, it is something that you must earn. It is something that you must also be able to give. It can't be a, a you know a, a take and not give back. You know you have to give back. And when you give back, it's not 
the give back you think, you know, most of us think, you know, if I give money or if I did a good deed for the day, that that's what it is. You have to be able to give back by simply helping someone else who may have gone through what you've gone through. Strive to, to be their best selves. Practice every day that humility and that humbleness and, and, and being a father and being a man is teachable moments. It's teachable moments that even if you matter that person, you can't take away that teachable moment. Whatever I taught you, whatever it is, you hear you hear how um, how young young men talk sometimes. Like, yeah, you know, my father was a son of a gun, but you know, he did teach me how to you know how to fight. Something I can't take away. I taught you something that I can't take away. I gave you something of me that I cannot take away. I I, I shared. Oh, I was vulnerable, or I was loving, or I was nurturing. Right? Things I cannot take away. I can't take away those things. How you take away someone's nurture? It, it can. So I say, you want to live your true self and live your, your, your best self. Be vulnerable with someone else. Protect yourself. But show proper gratitude. And I mean proper gratitude. Show proper gratitude of, of who and why you are who you are. To live life is a purpose, yes. Or uh, 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 a definition of that purpose makes the life worthwhile. Despite whatever may come. And understand that life is not perfect. It's not a bed of roses. To know, to know that nothing else will surprise you. You will embrace the bad as well as the good and you will make it a balance. And that ability to God in you to know, I got this, you're good. I know who you are. I want, to, I want fathers to know that is not a lie. You are loved and you are powerful. But we all need guidance. We all seek, we all seek to belong, to be connected. Embrace yourself, you know, and enjoy that ride and that journey. Learn from the mistakes as well as the achievement, but you must learn from them that you can move on and make it a better strive. I don't know what's on the other side, and I'm not going to promise what's on the other side. All I know is make this make this life count. Ra, I want to thank you. This is from the heart, full of wisdom. Thank you. I, I uh, it was at FatherTorch.com. Listen, you know, see what see what it does for you. This is a, a beautiful um, discussion. Hopefully you uh, you enjoy and please leave a comment. Don't be shy. Don't don't shy away. You know, if you have any questions, any feedback, please reach me back at fathertorch.com and join me for the next episode. Again, episode five, Sunday, streaming live on your Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. Enjoy and be blessed. Father Torch out. Guidance.